In this lesson, we're going to begin to connect some of the dots from the previous two lessons. Just to recap, remember that the British were now taxing the colonists to help pay for the war debts. And from lesson two, we learned that the colonists were uh, well versed in enlightenment philosophy of governing themselves and, and overthrowing governments that are not protecting their rights. So let's take a look now and see what the colonial reaction was to these uh, various British taxes. It should not come as a surprise when I say that the colonists were not particularly thrilled to pay taxes to Great Britain. These protests took the form uh, largely of boycotting British goods. They tried to hurt Great Britain where it would hurt the most, and that being the wallet by refusing to purchase British goods. The idea was you were going to impact British merchants, British factory owners, and pressure the factory owners who were now losing money, all of these uh, British traders, to pressure Parliament to repeal these taxes. Additionally now, with the passage of the Stamp Act in particular, you're going to have colonies, at least seven of the 13 colonies, come together and meet to uh, write a petition to the King and Parliament to ask them to repeal the taxes. Uh, keep in mind, colonies meeting together here is... Uh, Unusual, all right. We only the first time we had the colonies meet it was in 1754 with the Albany Plan of Union. So this really is only the second time that the colonies are coming together. There was not a lot of communication between the colonies themselves. Most of the communication and trade was largely between a colony and London, not so much between the colonies themselves. The argument that they used was that you had uh, essentially a, a foreign government, although the colonists were British citizens, they did not have colonial representatives in the British Parliament. Therefore, it was a governmental body that was elected by other folks that was now taxing them here in the colonies. In other words, we get to the, the famous quote from this time period, no taxation without representation. Uh, the colonists even made the point that they would be happy to pay the taxes if Parliament would allow them to send uh, you know, elect and send representatives to serve in Parliament. Uh, that's not really true. I mean, they did say it, but but it's not that they really meant it. Uh, it would have been very interesting if, if Parliament had called their bluff on that and allowed them to elect representatives, uh, because the colonists were not interested at all in paying these taxes, really under any conditions. And the result is what the colonists were hoping for, a repeal of the Stamp Act. Now you saw a little from the chart uh, a couple of lessons ago. There was actually more of a back and forth where Parliament would pass a tax, it might repeal the tax, but then uh, a year or so later replace it with a different one. Or, as we saw with the Townshend Act, it passed four taxes at once on tea, lead, paper, and glass. Then it repealed three of them, leaving the tea tax in place. All right, sort of uh, uh, the idea that uh, Parliament wanted to make clear to the colonists that it was the governing body and did have the authority to tax the colonists if it so chose. What the colonists did in reaction to the tea tax, or I should say what a handful of colonists in Boston did, uh, I'm sure you learned in elementary school, and then you see in pictures here, dressing up as Native Americans, boarding the ship of the uh, British East India Company, and dumping the tea overboard into Boston Harbor. And when, when word got back to uh, London, 
uh, about this uh, destruction of private property of, of, a, of a company, the, the British East India Company, uh, they were quite upset and uh, passed the Intolerable Act to really send a very strong message to uh, the Massachusetts colonists in particular uh, and, and the, all of the colonists in general that, that Parliament would regain control of this. Uh, much of this um, anti-British sentiment was centered in, in Massachusetts. You can see from the picture on the right, you've got colonists uh, pouring tea down the throat of a tax collector, uh, and the tax collector, he's not dressed in white, let me see if I can make this a little bit larger, the tax collector was actually uh, tarred and feathered, which is uh, rather painful, having hot tar poured on you, and the feather portion is just meant to be embarrassing, the tar portion is uh, uh, rather painful. Notice the noose hanging from the branch of the tree above the head, the logic here is that the tax collector is going to be strung up and, and killed, but I don't know that that was the case. Tax collectors were strung up on the back of a horse cart and paraded around town, having been tarred and feathered for people to laugh at them and whatnot. Uh, the Intolerable Acts, though, just so that you're aware, did shut down the Port of Boston, all right, really hurting the economy there, disbanded the Massachusetts Colonial Legislature, all right, and uh, really, and sent soldiers. There were soldiers that were sent, uh, additional soldiers to Massachusetts to better keep order. So uh, this did send uh, quite a chill through the colonies. This is going to lead to the colonies meeting in Philadelphia and what became known as the First Continental Congress. So you've got delegates from the colonies. Um, they're choosing to form colonial militias, they're choosing to arm themselves, they are at the same time trying to make an appeal to the king to try and fix this before it does come to fighting. So keep in mind, uh, the taxation starts 1763-1764. We don't have full-blown Declaration of Independence until 1776. So this is not an instantaneous process. You've got a 13-year process where you've got this escalation of anger happening between Britain and the colonies. Uh, but even so, even through the almost the entire process, uh, you have colonists trying to find a way to make peace and solve this problem without fighting, um, you don't at any time, even up to declaring independence, in no way do you have 100% of the colonists on board declaring independence, all right? Um, through much of this period, uh, no one's even talking about declaring independence. By 1774, they, you certainly have a number of colonists talking about it, but not a majority of colonists. So then just to sum up, uh, you've got reaction in terms of uh, boycotts by the colonists, right? Um, sending delegates in the in terms of the Stamp Act Congress and also the First Continental Congress to send an appeal to the king in both instances to try and see if there were things to work out. Of course, you did have. Um, uh, uh, rebels, if you will, uh, in Boston that, that took matters into their own hands and destroyed the, uh, the tea. Uh, that, you know, they were a handful of people, although uh, um, the sentiment to declare independence uh, was, was uh, greater in Massachusetts than it was in a number of the other colonies. Right, we will talk about declaring independence because, you know, that is where we are going in the very next lesson.